Hello, my name is Cathy Franz and thank you so much for checking out this tutorial. In this tutorial, I want to talk about how to handle JWTs effectively and securely on the client side. The most popular practice in the industry today is to save your JWT in a cookie or in your local storage. I've done this for a couple of years. I've done this for a couple of years and I've even taught it. I've done this for a couple of years and I have even taught others to do the same. But I didn't think it was a big deal until one of the applications I worked on was hacked. Now this was an XSS attack. This is an attack in which a malicious person runs malicious code on the client's browser directly attacking your application. Now they could do this to get access to your local storage or to your cookies and extract the JWT from there. Now using this token from your local storage or from the local storage of your customer's computer, they can pretend to be that customer. Now this is really risky because the JWTs that would be used as sessions or as local storage tokens would be long lived and the attacker would have a really long time and a lot of access to your JWT. So the solution we want to talk about today is a solution that would, first of all, prevent us from saving our tokens in a place that is risky, which is local storage or cookies. And secondly, implementing another solution that makes sure even if an attacker manages to get hold of a token, the access using that token will expire almost immediately. That way, we are very, very secure and difficult to hack. And even in situations when we are hacked, the access of the attacker expires almost immediately. So let's get started. For this tutorial, the first thing we need is a backend. So I have a setup project and I will share the link with you in the description. And it has an API and a client folder. The API folder has a basic server using Tensei.js and you should definitely check out Tensei.js because in just 24 lines of code, I was able to get an auth server, a GraphQL server with a lot of mutations and queries that automatically set up authentication with JWTs and an SQLite database to quickly test things. Now, secondly, I set up a client with create react app in the index.js. I mount three routes with react router, sign in, register, and the dashboard. The dashboard is at the home. And now if we go to the dashboard, if the user is not logged in, so if there's no customer, then I redirect to the sign in page. And that's what happens right now. If I visit the app in the browser, I'm redirected to the sign in page. Now the register page has three inputs, name, email, password, and we have an unsubmit here that extracts the values from the form and we would be implementing this functionality. So what's the first step for implementing JWT? The first step is when a user creates a new account, we want to communicate with our backend, create a new account for this user, and then the backend would respond with a JWT, which we would use to automatically log in the customer. So I have a snippet that already does this. So I'll paste it in here. And basically what this does is calls client, which is our API client and makes a request and it's the register request and passes the payload, which is name, email, password. And then it gets the response. The response contains a token and a customer. Now, when we get the token, we are going to set the client header authorization to be bearer and that token. Now this token is the JWT that the backend responds with. And the customer is the details of the newly registered customer. And we set that in memory. Notice we are not saving the token to local storage. Notice we are also not persisting it to cookies. We are just saving it in memory. Now in memory means that our application is almost immune to cross-site scripting attacks because there is no way for the attacker to reach out to our application in memory and get the token. And that's really secure. Now it would definitely lead to a lot of questions, which we are going to answer in a little bit. So let's go ahead and try to register a user and see what happens. Now I would register a new user, John Doe, John at Doe.com and password. Now we'll check out the network and we expect to see a request go out to the server the token set to the header, 
the customer set and the user redirected to the home dashboard. So let's create an account. And we are redirected to the dashboard that shows us John Doe and the email of the locked in user. Now, let me go to the dashboard. And as you can see here, it gets the customer and displays the name and the email. And that's good. But let's look at the request from the server for a little bit. The first thing we notice is that there is a set cookie in the headers. So it makes a post request. And if you are not used to GraphQL, don't worry about it. It's basically making a post request to a point to an endpoint called register customer. Now, when the server returns the response, and this is the response with the customer and the token, it also does something. It sets a cookie and this cookie is refresh token. That's it there. And now, it also sets some very important properties on this cookie. First, it expires in about a week's time. That's by default. We can customize this. And then it also has the HTTP only flag. And that tells the browser that this cookie should not be accessible via JavaScript. So if you do document.cookie, you can see all the other cookies that are on my browser for this particular domain, but you wouldn't see the HTTP only cookie that was just set by our server. So that's really important. You need to have the server set a HTTP only cookie with the refresh token on your browser. And it can expire in two years, three years. It doesn't really matter because we've made sure that number one, on the server, this refresh cookie only gives access to this account. And secondly, it does not give access to the rest of the account capabilities. It can only be used to request for an access token. Okay, so your server needs to do this. Now, Tensei does this really well by default. So it automatically sets the cookie for us in the browser. Now we'll talk about what this means and how we'll use it. But now we have a locked in user and we have a cookie set on the browser but this cookie cannot be accessed via JavaScript, only via HTTP, which means when we are making a post request to the server or a get request, the browser would automatically attach this cookie for the HTTP request, but it would never be accessible by client side JavaScript. So now let's refresh the page. And there we have our first problem. The user is locked out. And that's because the session is not persistent. We didn't save it into local storage. We didn't save into any cookies except the refresh token, which is not accessible via JavaScript, which means we also cannot access the refresh token. So how do we fix this? Now we are going to go to the store and think of this as maybe a Redux store, or if you're coming from Vuex, it's going to be a Vuex store where we store our customer credentials. Now this is where we have the customer and this is where we should probably be getting the customer from local storage and setting into state or into context so that the whole application can have access. But that's not what we are going to do. We are going to call the backend and the backend is going to figure out if this user is actually logged in. And if the user is logged in, then it would return to us a JWT for that user. Now we are going to call an endpoint called refresh token. And I'm just going to replace this with the snippet for that. And the endpoint is called refresh token. So client or request refresh token. And this is called on the use effect hook. So as soon as the page mounts, it's going to try to refresh the token. Now this endpoint is going to check the HTTP only cookie that was set on this browser. And if it is valid, then it is going to generate a JWT for this customer and then return to us. And then we can get the token, which is a JWT, and we can set it as a header on the client. That way the user has access and is automatically logged in. Now, in the case where it fails, we wouldn't set a customer, which means that we would be automatically redirected to the login page. So let's try this out. I would refresh the page right now. And now we are automatically logged in. So what happened? Let's look at the GraphQL request. Now, if we look at this request that went out, it sent request headers. Now the request headers, you can see there is a cookie and this cookie contains a refresh token right here. 
So the refresh token is automatically attached to every request going to our server. And that's because it is an HTTP only cookie, which we cannot access from the browser, but it's sent to the server. Now, which request did we make? We made a request to refresh the token. And this endpoint or this GraphQL mutation returns to us the customer, returns to us a new JWT and an expires in timestamp. Now, every time the user refreshes the page, it would make sure that the user is authenticated by getting a new token from the backend. And now the user is locked in, which means that the user's token always stays in memory and it is never prone to an attack. Now, what happens when this token expires? Because right now you can see it expires in 3,600 seconds, which is about an hour. And I wouldn't recommend having a JWT this long. I would recommend 10 to 15 minutes so that if an attacker gets your token, then it would expire real soon. Now, what we have to do is set a timeout because if the user is using our application for about 15 minutes to 20 minutes, then we do not want them to be automatically locked out. What we want to do is refresh the token even before they need to. And to do that, we are going to set a tiny timeout. And this timeout will do a silent refresh in the background. And I'll paste it right here. And what this does is it sets a timeout for the expires in. So let's say it expires in one hour. It's going to convert this to milliseconds and then remove 500 milliseconds. So this is kind of like saying when it is 59 minutes, 59 seconds and 500 milliseconds, make the API request to refresh the client's token. And then it would set the header and set another timeout. That way, before the token expires, it makes another request to get a new valid token. And that's what we we'll call a silent refresh. The user does not know what's going on, but every couple of minutes, I recommend 10 to 15 minutes, it's going to make that call to refresh the token. And which means we do not save the token anywhere in local storage, but it's completely in memory and completely secure. Now, what do we do with logout? I'm just gonna refresh here. You can see the user is still locked in, but what do we do with logout? Now I'm a magician, so I automatically made a logout button appear here, which we are going to use. So when the user clicks on this logout button at the moment, nothing happens. But what we need to do is clear the user's session. Now the session is persisted using a HTTP only refresh token. And we can't access that token from the client side, which means we can't clear it. So we need to call the backend to clear the refresh token. And then, and then we clear the in-memory token on the front end. To do this, I'll visit the dashboard and I would paste in the logout snippet. This calls remove refresh token endpoint and then pushes the user to the sign in screen and sets the customer to null, which clears the session. So let's go ahead and try to click on the logout button to see what it does. We click on logout and now we are redirected to the sign in screen. But let's have a look at the GraphQL request. First thing we notice is that the GraphQL request headers contains the cookie, which is the refresh token on this browser. Remember it's HTTP only, so it's sent to the server and the server does something interesting. In the response headers for the servers, it sets a cookie to nothing, notice it's empty, sets the max age of that cookie to zero, and the expiry is immediate because the max age is zero. So the server, since it can send HTTP only cookies to the browser, expires that refresh token, which means right now, if the user visits the dashboard, refreshes the page, the user is redirected to the sign in screen because our silent refresh or our refresh token endpoint now returns invalid refresh token. And that's really good. Now this is much more secure and improves a lot of security vulnerabilities there are with storing the token in local storage or in cookies. All right. So I think the only pending thing is the login functionality. So I'm just going to copy the snippet, visit the login page and paste it right here. And if we log in with john.1 at do.com, we are redirected to the dashboard page, which means the user can successfully log in. 
And just like the register, the login sets the authorization header to bearer token, which is the JWT sent from the backend. And if we check in the GraphQL request, the login customer also sets a refresh token cookie, which is HTTP only on the browser. It also sets the customer in the code and pushes the user to the dashboard. Okay, so that's been it. But there are two important settings that we have to keep in mind before this can actually work. Now, this example is a little bit trickier because the client side and the server side are running on different domains. So if your client side is running on a different domain and your server side is running on an API domain, for example, then there are some configurations that you need to know. The first thing is the client needs to include credentials permitting the client, which is the HTTP client, permitting the browser to send the cookie from one domain to a completely different domain. So if you do not specify credentials include to your HTTP client, it could be GraphQL client, it could be Axios or Fetch, whatever you're using, then it wouldn't send that cookie and your server wouldn't be aware of it. Secondly, on your backend server, you need to allow the backend server receive requests from the other domain that's configuring calls and most importantly you also have to say credentials true and this would instruct the backend to accept credentials from a different domain and also accept requests from a different domain now in case you're wondering how all of this is happening with tensei tensei is using apollo graphql behind the scenes and it's gonna pass all the middleware options directly to the apollo server for you now, I really encourage you to check out Tensei. I think it's a really amazing way to build applications, super fast, super lightweight, super easy to write. You can see in 24 lines of JavaScript, which could actually be reduced to 10 lines, we were able to get a full-blown GraphQL API with authentication, refresh tokens, access tokens, and we can even have more. For example, if I call verify emails here, then we automatically have email verification set up for our authentication. I can even call two-factor auth and this automatically sets up two-factor authentication for all of our registered customers. Then I can also call roles and permissions and we would have a full-blown roles and permissions system to authorize our operations. There's so much that Tensei has to offer and just by providing these tiny configurations, we can have full-blown backend applications in absolutely no time. So please check it out. Also share this video to as many people as you can. I really want people to start building more and more secure apps really easily. Please follow me on Twitter, like my YouTube channel, subscribe, and also subscribe to my email list so that you can always be updated whenever I release fresh content like this one. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for listening to me blab all this while. I hope you learned a thing or two and I hope you're going to start following the best practices for implementing JWT authentication. Thank you. My name has been Katy Friends. See you in the next one.